and textiles and advisor for Expo North. So a little bit about us, first of all, before I introduce our panelists here. Um, so we offer year round support for the creative sector, which includes areas around writing, publishing, screen, broadcast, digital and technology and music, fashion, craft and textiles. Um, many of you will know about our annual Inverness based conference and this year we're really um, excited about the exceptional lineup um, and within even the um, fashion and craft sector we have um, Patrick Grant of um, uh, our fashion designer and judge on the great British sewing bee he'll be um, a great session because we've just recently announced that as well as WGSN delivering a trend forecasting um, prediction um, talk which will be great so please do register on the Expo North website to keep updated with what's happening and that's in the 16th and 17th of June. We also offer a support program for those based in the Highlands and Islands and Murray area. Please do register on the um, website if you have any um, questions, if there's anything that we can help with. Okay, that's that bit over. So I'm delighted to welcome this morning Nikki and Celine from Pressloft. Pressloft is a new online platform which makes PR simple for makers by connecting them with a, a large network of press and influencers looking for companies to feature in their articles. So um, I've listened to Nikki and Celine previously and um, have found their webinars really useful and very practical. So um, I'd like to hand over to Nikki and Celine and thank you very much for, for doing this with, uh, with Expo North today. Oh, thank you, Nikki. Uh, thanks so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for the intro. I'm just going to introduce myself and Nikki really quickly before we start. Um, so my name is Celine and I'm the marketing manager at Pressloft and then Nikki is a Pressloft founder. Uh, so we usually do webinars together, um, chatting today is all about uh, PR and how PR can help your company. Um, during the webinar, if you have any questions, use the chat. Um, and actually, before we start, if you can just um, enter your name and your company, um, and if you have uh, done PR before, that would be really useful for us to know um, right before we start. So use the chat and, and let us know. Um, yeah, it'd be yeah. great to know what type of products that you sell, because sometimes we can give specific advice during the, the live to your type of product as well. Um, so we particularly look after interiors and gifts, but that's very, very broad. So it covers anything from baby products to fashion accessories to uh bathroom products, anything, all sorts of different things. So uh, ceramics, yes, that's de definitely something uh, we work with all sorts of ceramics companies. Hi, Pauline. Mm -hmm. nice to see you. Um, Emma, Mosaic and Felt Maker, lovely, definitely. Mm -hmm. If you make products that are sold in the shop, um, mm -hmm. specifically around Christmas and things, then we can definitely give you some advice today as well. So hi, paintings, lovely, handmade gifts, excellent. Jewelry, yes, great, particularly for gifting. Um, clothing, yeah, we do a little bit in there. Jewelry. Perfect. Cool. That's great. Cool. So I think today will be very, very useful for all of you. Um, if you have um, done PR before, then this will be just a really good reminder and some really good tips. If you have never done PR before, then today will be very, very useful to just um, show you the first steps that you need to take and um, to get your products and company in the press. Um, okay. um, gift shop. Fantastic. So um, if you can also let us know if you've done PR before and if you've had any successes, then it also helps us. Well, just be interesting to know uh, what, what sort of level of people we're dealing with. And um, first time, lovely. We like people i have never done it before because you'll get probably the most out of this. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Feels On you. Brilliant. Great. Okay, great. Um, so I'm just going to start sharing my screen. So um, we will talk about um, probably about 40 minutes um can you see my screen nikki i can yeah, yeah. um so while we talk feel free to ask any questions um it's quite a lot of information we try to make everything easy but obviously if you have any questions just feel free to ask and then um if we don't have time to get back to you definitely um drop us an email afterwards so today um just the agenda will all be about um PR. So first of all, introducing Pressloft to you because it might not be um, something that you already know. Um, and then we are going to move on to how PR can really help your business and why uh, most companies do PR. We will speak about the timing in PR, which is very crucial if you want to get your um, products and business in the press. And then how important P um, images are in PR. And then uh, we will just move on into press releases and how to write them. And then I will just show you really briefly how Pressloft works, um, just because um, 
you know, we, we think PressUp is a good tool for lots of small businesses uh, to use. And again, Q&A at the end. So anything that we don't answer while we chat, we will just make sure to spend uh, some time at the end. Um, I've also done a um, landing page with lots of free uh, resources. So I've done um, a press release guide, a PR calendar for the year, and then also a free trial on PressUp that um, you can use if you wanted to. So I'm just going to kick off with um, how Pressloft, just as a summary, how we work. We're all about making things really simple. So making PR simple and we're about to launch a product, which also makes your social media marketing really simple as well. Um, so just as a summary of what PR really is and what you would do um, if you weren't using a platform. So what you'd have to do is PR is just about the bit that PR that we do is all about getting into publications, but that can also mean blogs and working with social influencers as well. So first of all, you have to find the right publication with the right demographic, the right target audience that you want to get in front of. Then you need to find the right person within that publication or, or social channel. Then you need to find how to contact them. So their email address ordinarily. Then you need to write the email, which is often a press release format. And we're going to talk you through how to do that today. And then you need to sell that into them, pitch it normally on email and then have a discussion with them. Then if they want them, then you send high resolution images to them to feature. Even for online, they still often require high resolution images. And then you need to either hire a media monitoring agency or check the press yourself to see when you've been featured and then there are ways that you can use that so really very very time consuming most of you are business founders and owners and you do everything in the business so um, we the point of press is that it makes it really really quick and simple so all you need to do is upload your product images in high resolution format and again we'll talk about that in a little bit and then you're discovered by our huge network of bloggers journalists and influencers and at the moment i think we've got about twenty-two thousand who use us to source products for their articles and then you get lots of lovely coverage and we send you an alert when we can find that coverage for you as well um, we work with massive brands. We've been going about 17 years now, I think, so a long time. And we've worked with all sorts of brands. So from any of the massive ones like made.com and B&Q and all these lovely people here. But we work with so many creators, like many of you yourselves. And we put all of these people onto the same platform. So they've got just the same chance of getting featured. And some of I really want everyone to take away that today that journalists really want to feature small brands, micro brands, creators, brand new products, their role, their job is to source and find new talent. And mm. they want to hear from you. So if you do nothing else, believe that journalists do want to hear from you. Mm. And often people are really intimidated and think no living etc will never feature me or whoever will never feature me. It's absolutely not true. Um, so we just allow that um, you to all be showcased along the same vein but what's really interesting is there's such an appetite for small brands that we now very recently started doing a small brand newsletter so we're really pushing out this content because journalists are desperate to know specifically what these smaller brands are doing so yeah definitely take that away from today um, it's definitely something that we've seen um, more and more since the beginning of the pandemic where you know there was a massive trend before um about supporting small businesses, but definitely um, now a lot more people are just moving towards, um, you know, uh, high, not on the high street, but um, neighborhood shop and then just uh, supporting communities um, by shopping small. So definitely it's been really, really interesting how it just like, um, you know, exp like exploded this uh, sort of like um, press coverage uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. Definitely. Yeah. A huge appetite so yeah we generate about 10,000 pieces of coverage a month for our clients all around the world so if you are wanting to ship internationally then um, you can also PR your company internationally um, with us as well uh, everyone gets a free trial at the end and we'll show you a bit more about how it works but the next bit's really um, is really important I think to start with the basics of why bother you know why bother doing PR at all we're all busy you could do all sorts of things advertising you could do shows you could do direct mail you could do social media why spend your time doing PR and there's a couple of really good reasons so the first one is the most obvious one it gives you more eyes on your brand so people reading about you and whatever channel that you've got your coverage in um, gives you more people looking at you but what's lovely about PR is that they are by default they have the right interests so in an interiors magazine they're interested in your interiors products um, in a gift guide they're looking to buy gifts um, in a craft title they'll be looking they've you know got a natural interest in craft so already you've got right down to the right demographic 
the demographic of reader and ultimately you'll get sales but what I really really want to um, push is that yeah PR isn't a silver bullet you can expect maybe you know typically 30 uh, pieces of um, items sold if you're in the Times or the Guardian or the Indie Best or something really really significant with a big readership um, it's not massive. It's not going to change your business overnight. Um, one piece of coverage won't make you uh, make you a huge success. It's particularly prevalent in, in the UK because the readerships are that much smaller. If you're in the States, sometimes that can really lead to big things and lots of opportunities off the back of one big piece of coverage. But in the UK, it, it really doesn't. You need to have multiple pieces of coverage over time to build your company and your presence. And that's what the next slide's more about is, um, is about brand uh, recall. So what you do is you, you, you know, you're in one title, you've given it a go, you've given it your all to get in living, etc. You get like a couple of sales, and you go, oh, I'm not doing it. I, it's not worth my time. It's not worth my effort. I'm going to spend my money and time elsewhere. But it is really, really powerful in that in just if you just jump on um, one, Celine, it shows you that um, reading one, like I said, you get direct sales, but reading two, it's the brand recall. It's people really getting your brand and your company and your products into their head. And we all do that. So if you think about it, and this isn't just about PR, it's about your marketing mix. So um, you're in one article, you might do some Facebook advertising, you might be at a show, you then maybe do some clever retargeting work, very worth looking at retargeting when you do start as well. You might then do some more PR. And this mix in is getting you in front of them. And uh, the key point is about if someone reads about you seven times, they'll they'll remember your brand, whatever the number is. It's about frequency. So you need to persist with your marketing efforts and do it across multiple channels. And that's what builds brand recall. And then people will think about you, you know, when when you're giving a gift. Oh, I remember that lovely pair of earrings that I saw or, oh, I've just moved house. I need a new door sign. Right. I'm, I'm going to go back to that person that I read about or seen in an advert. That's that's the power of it. And that's very difficult to measure. But you know, we all need to do that. We all need to invest in building that that brand recall and PR can really help in that. Yeah, and what's really good now is that um, even if you don't have budget for retargeting or ads, um, a lot of people now are just following brands after being featured on a, an article um, on social media. So I do that all the time when I see a company that I really like or a small uh, maker or designer. I will just trade and uh, go to Instagram and then just follow them. And then this is a really good way for you to then um, grow your um, newsletter or have someone that is following you, then you can just, uh, you know, uh, post more and then just, um, so there is lots of ways um, that PR can actually like directly impact your business without um, being only sales. Yeah. Mm, definitely. Um, now, the other big part uh, that PR can help in is search engine optimization, so SEO, and that's where you're positioned on Google. Um, the power of PR in this is that when a magazine online, say something like, say, Living, etc., or The Times, when they feature you, they often give you a link back to your website, and that's called a backlink. And Google loves good quality organic backlinks um, from PR. And that's why PR's had a really great resurgence in the last five years or so before that it was going a little bit out of fashion print was in the decline but now there's all the online titles doing it and it's really powerful as an seo tool it's brilliant so what that means is that when someone types in say red sofa into the search term you appear and you want to appear at the top of that as close as possible and google uses these number of quality backlinks as a measure to go oh they must be really good at what they do we're going to put them further and further up the rankings this is a long-term strategy. This does not happen overnight. One article in the Times won't get you to the top of organic search results, but it will build it over time. When you're doing it for six, 12, 18 months, you'll start to feel the organic traffic to your site improving over time as well. And then the last bit I wanted to mention about the benefit is the brand association. So imagine that you have featured in uh, you know, one of your favorite titles. So L Decoration is often one that we get to hear or Crafts Monthly or The Times. Imagine that you can tell people that you've featured in that and you've had an endorsement by them. Um, the third party endorsement is very, very powerful. It's three times as effective as advertising. Someone else saying you're great without you paying them to say they're great is really, really great. And this builds trust. This builds trust, particularly for small brands, which people haven't necessarily heard of and don't know whether they, you know, they're going to fulfill their order or they're actually going to great, build great products. By saying all these lovely people have featured you, 
then you will get more sales from people visiting your website because they trust you. And that's called conversion rate optimization. You have to use your coverage to do that and you have to use it quite cleverly on your website, but just very quickly, we've got a whole um, blog post on this that we link to in the landing page that Celine's going to give you at the end. You cannot share your coverage or use the logos, but there are lots of ways that you can do share your coverage and the fact that you've been featured without compromising any copyright or running the risk of any fines. So do read that if you, at the stage when you've started to get coverage, um, it'll be a wor it's worthwhile just checking in to, to make sure you're not going to um, get any fines by sharing coverage. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, so Nikki just um, chatted about how PR um, he's, should be part of your business and how important it is and the benefits. But now we will just move on to some more practical tips on um, how to start doing PR. So the first thing you will need to do, and um, so for anyone that has uh, products listening today is take off your images. So we will speak now about how important images are in PR. Um, so first of all, journalists will always want to have high-res images for your products. Um, so if they do um, any articles on your brand, products, um, even if it's like a company profile uh, piece, you will need to have high-res images. So this is just a quick summary. So it needs to be JPEG format, 300 dpi, 1000 by 1000, and up to eight megabytes. This is just um, the requirement that journalists will always ask you before they feature your products. So make sure you have those images um, in the right size. And then obviously, if you, if you um, can have your images professionally um, done, so by a photographer, or if you're doing that on your own, just make sure that you have the right um, images. And I'm gonna show you um, two kinds of images that really work with the press. So just on the sizing of image, just um, it, it's not just for print journalists. This is for online um, yeah. journalists as well. So um, they still have that requirement of high risk. Some of them will screen grab, but most of them need those really crisp images. Otherwise, they end up looking like that rose, which is all pixel mm. and looks completely blurry and will make their page or their post look rubbish. And so they're all about making things look really beautiful and they need those high resolution images um, mm -hmm. to make sure their articles look nice. Yeah, and it's a good point because actually, um, if you don't have high-res images for your products, uh, we would recommend you um, to just wait until you actually have all of the images um, in high-res formats before you actually do uh, start do your own PR. And um, just because if you get in touch with a journalist with like really beautiful uh, press release and they love your images, but you don't have the right size, then they will just not fit you. So definitely something that you need to, uh, to do before you start doing PR. Um, so the first type of image uh, that we wanted to talk to you about today is um, called cutout images. And those are very, very popular for any sort of get the look or give guides and that you, you I'm sure you have seen in the press or online. Um, and those are just your product on a white background. Um, and those are really, really easy for journalists to do like a mood board kind of feature, um, like you can see in, in, this, um, in this example here. So it's important to, to say that um, just taking your product in a, in a white box that you can maybe buy from Amazon, it, it's fine. It, it won't get you as much coverage as if you actually get those images cut out. So you can find cut out image services everywhere. So if you search clipping path, uh, cutting images out you can get them done for about a couple of dollars each and we've got we've actually got a new service which will do it for any of our clients as part of the any package um, and you can just literally cut them out really easily on that um, not quite launched it yet but it's coming soon but that represents about 70 percent of the images downloaded and I think it should be really reassuring for anyone um, watching that you don't need to invest in a huge professional shot mm -hmm. uh, lifestyle image with all you know beautifully styled First, you need to get your cutout images and then you can start PR. Then, you know, as you go, you might want to style your images nicely. We've got a really good webinar with a great um, stylist called Emma Morton Turner. Um, I think that might be linked in the landing page, maybe. If not, have a Google, yeah. I'm sure it'll be around. But um, yeah, so you it's later on that you need to worry about styling your images. Certainly for a, a smaller business, getting them mm -hmm. cut out is really simple to do you can you know you can do it yourself there are ways just make sure the lighting's good and the, and particularly the shadowing isn't overwhelming or or um patchy and then you'll be in a great starting point to start your own pr 
Mm -hmm. And those account for about 70% of downloads on Priceline. So it's definitely um, journalists always look for those type of images to feature in the article. And again, it can be on paper, but also online um, and bloggers and influencers, anyone really using your images uh, for press will be uh, looking for this type of images at some point. So definitely have those. Um, and then the next one is lifestyle images. Um, so this is how we name those uh, type of images. So those are just, uh, for instance, this one, I think, oh yeah, this one is just a wall uh, paint, uh, but you can see this is uh, the color of the paint in um, lifestyle um, type of image. And then this one is a duvet, uh, which is also, wouldn't have the same feeling if it was cut out. So they did it in a beautiful live, um, live, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thanks. Um, so um, de depending on the type of uh, products that you have, uh, you might want to think about um, having some of those um, images and then also some cutout. So lifestyle normally, uh, you know, they are more a bit more inspirational in terms of um, layout for magazines. So they normally um, make bigger article in, in magazines and uh, sometimes they can also make the cover. Um, lots of online magazines will also uh, want lifestyle just because it's, it's a bit more inspiring than just having a cutout image. So cutout image, lifestyle um, images. So 70% um, of cutout 30% of lifestyle. If you can have this sort of uh, ratio, then um, that would be a really good start for you. Um, the next thing we wanted to chat to you about is how important understanding lead, lead times is when you start doing PR. Um, so really quick example, um, if you were um, to contact a journalist from a really big magazine, um, and then you get in touch with them in, October, in November, to get featured um, in the Christmas uh, features, you have missed um, your opportunities because they have already um, finished working for um, the, the articles that they have been writing about. Um, so it's really, 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 really important that you understand um, uh, timing when you're reaching out to journalists just to make sure um, that you're not missing out on opportunities really. So we have just summarized um, Two, type of, uh, two types of uh, publications. So a lead time is how far in advance a publication is working on the article um, before it is published. So we have long lead and short lead. Long lead usually work two to four months in advance and those can be living, etc., red, L decoration or any monthly magazine that you might want to get featured in. Um, you need to remember that those work a really long time in advance um, so if you wanted to uh, pitch your products or your business uh, for a specific season, you need to make sure that you just um, go backward and pitch them at the right time. And then it's the same for short lead. So those are more uh, blogs, weekly magazines, newspapers, uh, like housebeautiful.com or The Times. They work uh, sometimes on the same day up to two months in advance. Um, yeah, so just really, really important to understand those lead times. Um, so this month, long lead, long lead magazines will be working on summer, and then short leads will be working on some some of them on Easter, which is next week. Um, and then what else? Uh, In terms of short spring. leads? Yeah, spring, yeah. Easter. Yeah. yeah. And then long lead, summer, and then everything that is happening uh, after June, July. And oh my goodness, Christmas is coming. I'm not kidding. I know. Last year, the journalists started, we got our first leads for Christmas in May. It was unbelievable. We, it's normally June, us that at the earliest of the long leads will start in, in, in June, but we started getting leads in May. So yeah, you've got to start thinking ahead. So if Christmas is a big time for you, then do get your images ready now and start to think about, you know, pitching and press releases. And we'll talk about how to write press releases in a sec. But yeah, I can't believe it's here again nearly. So. I know. <laughs> Yeah, so what we've done is actually um, we summarized a lot of um, events that you can use for your business. Um, and we separated long lead and short lead for every month of the year. So it's kind of like a 12, 12 month uh, PR calendar that you can use. And I've done, um, I've attached that to the PDF that I will, um, or to the link 
and that you can uh, go to after the talk. So it's a de definitely a really good guide for you to just um, see the opportunities for your business. And if none of them are relevant, it's just a really good uh, reminder of there are opportunities for every single business if you just hook some of the trends and seasons um, to, to your products and business. So yeah, PR, PR is for everyone. Like there is lots and lots of opportunities. And so now I'm going to start on the, the, the bit that a lot of people are worried about or think that they're not able to do, and that's press release writing and how to structure it. Again, we've got a free PDF template that is a guide for you to follow, very straightforward, step by step. Um, and you can get that at the end as well on the landing page. So don't worry about taking too many notes. But just the first point that I really want to get across is that you don't need to be a good writer to write a press release. It's the journalists that are the writers who will curate the article, make it sound beautiful, make it look beautiful. You just need to present the facts to the journalist about your products in the right way. And there's a couple of tiny tricks and tiny tips that, um, that you need, the tweaks that will make it successful or not. And we'll, we'll teach you some of those today, but really don't worry. If you can write a product description, then you can write a press release. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's especially good for small business because they know the business more than anyone. Um, so it, it should be easy to, to speak about, um, you know, what they do and the business, yeah. So the first bit is um, what, what to write about, you know, which products do I actually write about? First and foremost, write about your new products. So anything new that you're launching and make sure the word new is in the title of a press release. Um, new products are what journalists are searching for all the time. Their job is news. So what is new? And so that's, a, that's what they're going to be looking for first. After that, you've got ways of repurposing your older products or even your new products into certain types of articles that the journalists are likely to be working on right now so the first one are the key dates so Celine in the calendar has got tons and tons of key dates like Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, festival season when it happens again, uh, traveling, weddings, back to school there's loads and loads of key dates that they will always be writing on and also there are key dates around what's happening now so for example the journalists are doing lots of picnic with friends features because we're about to be allowed to picnic with friends again so you can use news angles as well as these seasonal dates which come up every year and that that calendar will have loads of those in there for you and um, then there's trends and um, we did a webinar yesterday actually all about summer trends if you're interested you can find that I think it's on our Instagram somewhere maybe or will be um, yeah, yeah. if you're just to drop us an email and we can send you a link but uh, trends are really powerful as a way of hooking your products into the latest trend and then writing a press release around it and this can be for old and new products as well and then lastly colors colors any color trends any colors really um, in certain seasons are really popular so right now the short lead journalists are working on pastel colors because it's Easter and spring related items. In the summer, it's always tropicals and bright colors. Um, in the winter, it's always those reds and greens and golds and metallics. There are always these color trends which come around year after year, which you can see on the calendar. Actually, do you want to scroll back up, Celine, and show, and um, we can show a highlight of where the colors are on the calendar. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. quite nice to see it. So if you can see the color palettes here, that's the time of the month, uh, the time of the year that journalists are covering those types of color palettes. It's mm -hmm. just quite useful quick glance over mm -hmm. to see if you've got anything relevant in those palettes. Yeah, so you can see here, as Nikki said, um, pastel and then really bright for summer and then a bit more uh, orangey tones for um, autumn and then dark for winter. So definitely use that if you, um, yeah, if you can. And then, so you pick your products, you think you've got a product which journalists might be interested in right now, so then we need to start with writing the title. So whatever, um, the title's the most important part of the press release in terms of getting your product and your press release opened and read, and that's very difficult to do in, its, in itself because journalists get sent hundreds if not thousands of press releases a week, it's very, very competitive, so you need to make uh, yourself stand out. And it's this is not about being clever with words, again, this is about really thinking like a journalist, what are they going to be working on right now? What's interest, what's in the news, what's popular? And then making sure that word is in the title of your release. So for example, and I'm gonna give you examples because it sounds quite complicated and it's really not. So this one is from Letterbox Gifts and it's literally Mother's Day delivered with Letterbox Gifts. That's a title of a press release, did really well. It's got the word Mother's Day in there. It's got delivered with Letterbox Gifts. Like the one thing I would say about that one, the journalist might not know what 
what type of gift it is in there. They might be looking at floral gifts or they might be looking at jewelry or they might be looking at makeup. I would always put the product type in a press release title and that that's on the template that we'll give you as well. So the trend, the season needs to be in there or the color and the type of the product. And then you've, you know, that's brilliant. So this is another really show you an example of one. So new linen produce bags, plastic free kitchen storage. And you think, oh, is that not a bit of a mouthful or a bit boring? And it's not because it says new, the fact that it's a new launch, which is gonna get it open more than anything. It's linen produce bags, it's plastic free, which is a really hot topic right now. And it's kitchen storage. So the product type, that one was really popular with the press. The journalist absolutely knows what's coming. And if it resonates with them, they'll open it because they're working on one of those articles. And then another really simple one is from Tom Raffield. So Tom Raffield launches pendant lighting system. So the word launch is in there, so it's new, and it's got pendant lighting systems because that's the type of the product that's going to get it opened by a journalist if they're working on lighting at the moment. So really, really simple, a um, couple of things to follow. So five to 10 words, no more than 10 words. Include new and launch in the title if, if it's new, and then include the product type. Also, mm -hmm. don't forget to include the, the trend or the season or the color as well if, you, um, if it, it's relevant for that. And then next we've got summarize the key message. So it's basically padding out that title in more detail. So talking maybe about the kitchen storage options, the fact that it's plastic free in a lot more detail, um, the collection names, where they're made perhaps, is it eco or sustainable, any key features that the journalist might want to know more about. Um, repeat it in this bit if it's a new launch and when it was launched. And then also add your company name in there. Often people forget to put their company name and also the website link so that they know they can do some quick research if they want to. Mm -hmm. And the next bit is what Celine was talking about, all about your images. Make sure that if you have cutouts and lifestyle um, of your product, put both in so that if a journalist brief is to find cutouts, they know that you have them. If it's to find lifestyle, they know you have them. Put them nice and high up in your email. If, you, um, if you're sending it on via emails, put them nice and high up. Make sure they're low resolution versions though. Too mm -hmm. big and they'll just get blocked or you know they won't be interested or they'll, they'll come up too big. Just make them nice and small nice and high up and low resolution. With so we, sorry. Oh, no, we, we often get the question and I, I think I'm, I'm just gonna ask you now about, um, am I supposed to send a PDF attached to the email and then send the email or, or should I put the press release in the body of the email? So definitely put it in the body of the email. Don't attach it as a PDF. It's something that journalists, the majority of journalists that we speak to say PDFs are really frustrating because you can't very easily search through them in your email system. Um, they tend to keep press releases for a long time, then use their search function on their email to find anything relevant for dining rooms or gift guides or jewellery items or door accessories or whatever they're working on. They'll just do a quick search within their email system. And if it's in a PDF, it doesn't always work. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just one thing I wanted to say about images, do not send a press release if you don't have high resolution images of that project, it, it will, it, it just means you wasted your, your time and the journalist might get frustrated because they just assume that, you know, everyone should know that you need high resolution images and maybe you don't, but just make sure that you always have high res of anything that you want to promote. Mm -hmm. And then just the next bit is padding out a little bit more detail about the materials, the dimensions, prices of products is really, really important. And something I forgot to say on the images is that make sure that it's very clear which image is which product and the price. Very obvious, you do the same thing with your client newsletters, your customer newsletters, but uh, just make sure it's very, very clear which is which. Um, and then you might want to tell a little story about maybe how your product is different to anything else out there, uh, where it's made. Lots of you make your um, products yourself, so make sure they know that they're handmade and where they're handmade in Scotland or wherever you, you might be. Um, and then another one, another question to answer can be, what inspired you to create this? What's the slight story behind it? Um, that can be a really useful anchor point to just pad mm -hmm. out that little bit more detail there. Yeah, and it's really important because this is where you really give the content for journalists to actually write about your business. So don't miss out on, on this part, especially if um, you know, you're, you're a small business and doing something different from, uh, from uh, your competitors or other businesses. Definitely. 
And then I always recommend including a, a little bit more of your general company information, just in case that journalist might want to pad out into more of a feature of you or just add a little bit more depth to just a product feature. It's always worth having that in there just in case you can inspire them to write a fuller story. So um, when did you start? What's your heritage? Where are you based? Um, any key, key elements of your brand that are interesting? Um, pop that in there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then don't forget your contact details, really obvious one, but name, put your email back in again, just in case they screen grab it. Um, put your phone number in because often they're on deadline um, and they will need something very quickly, a product or a shoot or some information. And then obviously a stockist website where someone can buy your products. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I want to mention is um, I would recommend saying if you've got any samples available, um, the vast majority of people don't do sampling. Most of the massive brands and small brands don't do sampling. But just so that you know, if you do have samples, perhaps you've got a spare load of products lying around or, you know, it doesn't cost you very much to, to produce them, then you will probably get about double the amount of coverage that you would get them without doing it. Um, so just to let you know that it's really effective, but most don't do it. Um, you might also want to let them know if there are products available to, uh, to be returned back to you, but they're available for shoots as well. So you can pop a note in there to let the journalist know that you do have products um, that are returnable for, for shoots. Mm -hmm. OK, so now I'm going to ask Nikki three questions that we always uh, get. So to chase or not to chase, am I supposed to send a follow up when I've sent my press release out to journalists? Yeah, as, as tempting as it is, um, definitely I would not recommend it. Journalists get sent, like I said, up to a thousand press releases a week. So they can't be responding to everyone and they will, it's basically, they'll get in touch with you if they want to know more. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend doing that. Mm -hmm. And also um, it's not part of um, those questions, but uh, just to reassure people, press releases do work. Like we do um, have businesses getting, you know, twice as much as, um, someone that wouldn't uh, send a press release so definitely um, you know if you have never done it before uh, do it but um, mm -hmm. if you if you're doing it keep on on sending those out um, how long should a press release be so say um, I think you're going to show some in a bit aren't you on on the site uh, no more than maybe 500 words tops three four hundred words um, is probably about right some of them are really short and it's absolutely fine they'll get more product based uh, features and um, so much of what the journalist decision making process is visual that they're, 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 they're finding the right products for a look and a feel so often you know a lot of that content will be ignored they're just looking at those images so sometimes you get a product press release with a couple of sentences and loads of images mm -hmm. and they can be really effective so we'll show you some examples in a minute on, on press soft and you can see and then finally, how many images uh, should you include in your press release? Yeah, so we used to say like around five images, but actually we've shown from the data on Pressloft, add more, you know, more images you have, the more likely something's going to attract the journalist to feature you. So don't go, I mean, don't go mad, but mm -hmm. if you've got 10 images of your product, I would recommend adding them in there as long as they're not all absolutely identical. Mm -hmm. um, and also you can do multi-product press releases, but lots of products along that trend or theme or date you know, put 20 products in there if they're all perfect Mother's Day gifts, but just don't add them in if they're not really interesting and they haven't got beautiful photography. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just um, stop sharing this screen and then share my other one. Um, what I really wanted to do before we um, give you the link. Uh, OK, hold on. Where is my screen? Uh, Let me jump in. Uh, ye no, it's fine. Just sorry, one second. Here we go. Okay. Uh, here we go. So yeah, I'm going to start. Just give you really, really uh, like I don't know, four minutes intro on press love just to um, understand what we do. Um, so this is our website. Um, we have. Uh, lots of um, inspiration that we create for journalists. So uh, latest trends, as you can see, um, I I'm going to show you actually in a few um, seconds. So they can come to Pressoft to find the latest brands, latest images. They can collaborate with brand. Um, they can find um, um, the latest trends. So let's go. Point by point. So image libraries, this is what they use heavily to search for images. So if I'm a journalist working for, I don't know, living, et cetera, 
um, and I'm looking for a red. There we go. <laughs> Can spell. Um, if I'm looking for um, red cushions because I'm doing an article on red, um, what I can do is just add images to my basket. Um, all of those images are Harris, um, so they are already obviously uh, ready for me to use in my article. Um, and then they can download the image, um, the images in their basket, and then you can see they have details of um, the product name, the brand, the price. So we just make their life easy by having um, all of this content on a uh, press stop. And you can see the category. So we have lots and lots of um, you know, small businesses using um, different categories for, for the business. So fashion, uh, ceramics, uh, small accessories, gifting. Um, so we try to accommodate everyone just because we want journalists to be able to find um, everything they need um, on Pressloft. So you can have a look at the brands and we mentioned it earlier. Uh, we work um, internationally, so we have lots of different brands um, all over the world. Um, so have a look um, to see if, if you can find anyone you recognize. Um, trending, so this is um, something that we create um, internally at Pressloft. Um, so we come up, we do some research, oh, we do some research um, on a weekly and monthly basis, and then we create those collections for um, journalists. So um, let me show you an example. So you can come to that page and find inspiration or see what's trendy. Um, and then it's a really good way for us to um, highlight some of the clients, but also some of the trends uh, for journalists. So have a look here to just find inspiration and, and see what's, what's trending. Yeah, so trending is a bit like we're acting like a big PR agency. So this is where we use some of those principles of what's busy, what's what's busy, what's popular right now, um, what topics are they likely to be writing about? And we curate our clients into those to give journalists almost ready-made content and inspiration. So all that advice that we've just been giving you, we apply on this page to allow, uh, we get about an extra 10% of coverage through those trending pages. So it's working really well. And we're doing more and more of them because there seems to be a real big um, desire for them from, from, the, from the network, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then um, this is a press release. Um that uh, clients and, and brands have been sending through our platform. Um, so I'm just going to open, I actually haven't done it before, um, but I'm just going to open one just to show you what it looks like. So this is a press release. So everything that Nikki has mentioned, um, having images, some content, um, uh, contact information. So everything that we have on Presslove, just make, we have a, a portal where you can create your press releases. So it's very, very easy. Uh, for brands to just create and send press releases. So this is another example. You can see very short content. They're launching, um, I don't know if it's actually launched, but they are just speaking about their uh, new products or a range of products that they have on, on their shop. Um, so as a journalist, you can find and download all of the images, find the product uh, name, um, the pricing, so again, like a very good tool. So if you have never done press releases before, um, you can come to that page on Pressloft and then just find inspiration. This is uh, free for anyone to actually um, uh, look at. And then we do a couple more things. So journalist request, journalists can send a specific request and then you as a brand will receive um, those uh, specific requests and then you can just get back to them via email uh, or send your images directly from Pressloft. And then the last thing is influencer marketing. We haven't spoken about that today, but it's um, something that a lot of brands are doing now. Um, and we just make it very easy for you to reach out to um, uh, influencers in our network. And then you can, um, they can apply to your, collab your collaboration and you can start working with them and chatting uh, via Pressloft. Um, so lots of PR tools that we, um, that we offer on Pressloft. Um, now I'm just going to go back and share with you. Actually, it's going to. Uh, Nikki, do you mind uh, looking at the questions? Maybe I'm just going to set my screen again. Oh, I've got any actually. Oh, I actually might have one. Hold on a minute. Let's have a look. Why, when you search for red, you get to, oh, it's just um, part of the algorithm is what's been really popular by journalists. The odd um, client might have the incorrect keyword in there, and then we just um, remove them if they're wrong. Um, so sometimes it's partly incorrect keywords, or they might have had a grey bench with a red sofa. It's just um, a typical, mm -hmm. typical marketplace. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let me... 
Yeah, um, do you have any questions about uh, PR at all or how it all works? Yeah, so we, we actually, um, we are done with the presentation. Um, so if you have any questions, ask us now. Um, we do have that uh, PDF that you can download. So it's pages.pressout.com slash expo north. Yeah, um, um, you can download the PDFs that we have mentioned earlier. So your, your PR calendar and then you can access the free trial link. But it would be great um, if you have any specific question about your business, you can oh, ask nice. us now. Um, we would love to um, to just um, answer you. Okay, so Lindsay has asked, I was featured in Coast Mag, but how do you keep the ball rolling? So um, um, there's two ways you can keep the ball rolling. One, making the most of that coverage by what we were talking about, that brand association. So making sure that you're telling your customers, I was featured in Coast Magazine, um, this product was featured in Coast Magazine, make sure that you mention that on your website. Now the big thing with, uh, with that is you can't use their logo and you can't reproduce the article. And um, we do have a whole blog post about how you can use it. You can literally type the, a band of logos on your website to boost that. But do tell the world, you know, tell people that you featured. We've got some, if you look at our Instagram as well, we've got some nice templates of how you can just reuse your product image in a little template saying as featured in Coast Mag and then share that, that vibe going on. But in terms mm -hmm. of keeping the ball rolling about getting more coverage that's just all of what we've been talking about today so making sure that you're sending press releases um if you're doing pr off press soft you know building your media databases doing your research pitching in writing your releases sending them to them it's a, it's a lot of work but it can mm -hmm. it can be effective especially for a small business to start to get their name out there Mm -hmm. And one of the really easy thing you can do with your coverage is also um, having, so we did a whole webinar on how to maximize the value of your coverage, but it can be as simple as having it on Instagram, on your bio, or having like a story um, highlight on Instagram saying I've been featured in this magazine and just, you know, showing people that you, you have been uh, featured on those um, magazines can really help potential customers to also buy your products. So just use that any, any way you, you can uh, legally. Mm. And Claire, Claire Fletcher from Lucid Gin on the Isle of Jura says, are you seeing a decrease or in interest of print versus online? So um, there's a couple of factors here. So print, the volume of print titles has decreased dramatically, mm -hmm. but the volume of online versions of those same publications is growing massively. And the value of those online versions is huge. So for SEO, like we mentioned earlier, and because they're getting more and more readership. So sometimes the online version gets 10 times as many readers as the print version. But what you're doing is often the, um, the team that write for the online and the print version can be the same now. And that can be across multiple massive titles. So that print old school kind of print type of PR can apply exactly right through from the print to the online version as well. So it's it's a bit of a mix so yes I suppose is the answer to the print decline mm -hmm. but the same team are writing for the online versions as well yeah and then I guess now you also have a lot more opportunities online just with the uh, entrances you know now some of them are like big, bigger um, audience than some of the magazines so it's definitely um, something that a lot of brands are just um, moving towards to towards them towards okay, so Joan huh? brilliant you've asked um in the press releases is it okay to write some bullet points or does it need to be in full sentences uh, yeah bullet points are absolutely fine in fact sometimes it's easier to read the key facts it's harder to get a story uh, you know your the the fuller paragraphs about the story about how it was made but certainly the materials uh, basic facts in bullet points can work really mm -hmm. well. yeah mm -hmm. okay and then Pauline how do you find the right place to send the press release? I don't read mag many magazines that don't know how to start with choosing who to send it to, or is that something can be done via Pressloft? Yep, you can do it via Pressloft. Um, if you don't have any budget whatsoever, you can do it. It costs £45 to send a press release on Pressloft. So mm -hmm. um, just so that you know, if that's not within your budget, you can do it yourself. You're going to have to spend a lot of time researching mm -hmm. the magazine. Mm -hmm. Now, one fantastic resource that I really recommend subscribing to is readly.com. So it's R E A D L Y, readly.com. They aggregate tons and tons of magazines in one place. And within that, you can find the list of people that write for them. And often you can get what's called the editorial team. You can find a generic email address. And that's a great place to start. Um, mm -hmm. Ultimately, you want to get the right person's email address, but do start with the editorial if you don't have time to call them mm -hmm. up and find out who's working on which bit. And then you can start to build your Excel spreadsheet of a media list over time. 
Mm -hmm. And I think it's a really good place to start too, because what you want to do, if you want to target specific publications, you cannot want to um, see what products and business are featuring. Um, if you're pitching specific magazine, you don't want to pitch something that they have already covered the months before. Um, so like a really good, yeah, good place to start um, um, building your own database is definitely to buy those magazines that you really want to be featured in and then just start building up from, from there. But um, I just wanted to mention Twitter and Instagram. Now, loads and loads of journalists writing for those publications are now influencers themselves. Um, so they do have accounts and, you know, most of the time they give um, the email address on um, the bio or, you know, some of them are really approachable. So you could uh, reach out to them directly on uh, Twitter and Instagram. So, I mean, it's, you know, you need to start somewhere. So definitely uh, give it a try. It does, it does take time, but um, definitely something worth doing. Okay, so we've got a couple of other questions. Um, there is just one I can't answer, Bernard, about posting to the EEC. Now we're outside the EEC. Uh, I'm assuming you mean posting your products. Um, yeah, I, unfortunately, I can't, I, I don't know a lot about that. And um, that's more logistical rather than marketing wise. Mm -hmm. If you mean posting press releases, um, it's just all the same. You know, the, the same journalists want to hear from you in just the same way. Mm -hmm. um, and then someone asked, can you please put up a link to the webinar that shows how you can use links to the titles and logos? We've actually also got a blog post. I don't have the webinar link to hand, um, but there is a blog post that you can easily find on blog.pressloft.com. And that gives very much the similar content on there. And that'll be a bit easier for, for me to yeah. direct you to now, Paul. Um, I'm actually just going to give you the link to Vimeo. Oh, great. Uh, just now. Uh, yeah. So I've I've Vimeo.com forward slash Pressloft, isn't it, I think? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So this is the link you can... Uh, Oh, I think I just need to pull in just one second. Here we go. Um, so you can just head to this link and then we will. Uh, There's all sorts of videos content. there, including yeah. the one that actually we did yesterday is on there as well. Um, mm -hmm. So I think I confused you there about whether images should be high or low res in the first press release. So in any press release within that email, which is often sent by email, make sure those images are low resolution versions but that you also have a high resolution version for when the journalist requests it from you. Um, I hope that makes a little bit more sense. Um, okay, so then another great question, do the images need to be delivered with a transparent background? So that would be a PNG format typically. Um, we, we work with JPEGs, they're fine for journalists, they tend to like them. We have a new, we're tweaking it now to be, to allow them to also be sent with transparent, but no, for now it's absolutely fine with a solid background JPEG. Um, to be honest, if you're not if you're not doing it on press stuff, either will be fine. Um, but we always and always in my background, I've always done um, JPEG with a solid white background. So we have a question from Claire about how much of your journalist database feature successes have been out with the UK. Oh, what was that one? Sorry. Uh, how questions. much of your journalist features successes have been? Oh, that's a great question. So yeah. I would say about in on Pressoft about 50-50. So about 50% in the UK, 50% in a, around the rest of the world. So we're really good in Australia in, and in Germany, um, then throughout Europe. So Spain, Italy, France, um, loads of stuff going on, R Romania, Poland, a huge number of titles. Uh, mm -hmm. all the world. Not so much in America, where we do have like the massive titles using us, but not to the same frequency as in the UK. Um, but the UK is our biggest market in terms of um, activity on the site. So we work with about 80% of um, interiors publication. Um, they come on a daily basis on press up to just download images and find inspiration. Great, I think, I think we've answered everything. So anyone got any last minute questions? Hi, Joan. Hi. <laughs> and we're always available. Um, so if you, so I, I'm just going to say it before we end, we start, we have been starting doing those weekly catch up on Instagram. So on once a week on Tuesday, we just log on Instagram just to speak about what journalists are working on. So follow us on Instagram um, at Pressloft and then um, you can just get the news uh, on a weekly basis and you can also head to the blog, uh, blog.pressloft.com and uh, subscribe to our free newsletter. Yeah, <laughs> lots of information. <laughs> yeah, that's been brilliant. Thank you, Nikki and Celine. Really, really good. Um, lots of information there. And obviously, this is on um, being recorded on Facebook, so people can play that back too. Um, so if they, you know, if there's anything you've missed, but 
really, really practical, very useful for anyone who's making product. And um, yeah, I, I know your site. I think it's a great site. Um, so um, it's been very useful for me in, in my business, Avenis. And um, we've had a lot of um, great follow up from the content, um, being um, the visuals and the, the content as well. So, yeah, well done, everybody, for, for what you're doing there. <laughs> Thank so you. We've loved it. We've loved it. And yeah, like I said, we've, we're always answering questions. We can talk about PR all day. So do drop us a line if there's anything that we haven't covered. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah, so thanks so much. Have Thank a good you. weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.